So we are going to have a panel presentation next um, provided by the climate action team, Gray Bruce. Um, we have two co-facilitators for the session. Uh, so Marilyn Struthers has worked with community organizations for social change locally, provincially, and nationally through the Ontario Trillium Foundation and Ryerson University. She has uh, experience as a facilitator, writer, researcher, coach, and development consultant. Um, we originally had Liz Zetlin planned to be on with us today as well, but she has uh, designated a replacement. So we have Dr. John Anderson with us as well today. Um, John is a retired marine scientist after a career with the P Department of F Fisheries and Oceans, as well as an adjunct professor at the University of Newfoundland. Um, John was also the producer and science consultant for the Resilience Film, um, which we can link into the chat. If you haven't seen that, uh, it's definitely a must watch. Um, I know Marilyn and John have a very interactive presentation planned, um, so I will turn it over to them now um, to proceed. Thanks, Jason. And um, hello, everyone. Uh, isn't Miles wonderful? Oh, my goodness. Those kinds of stories, I think they help us to figure out how to tell our own stories. And that's part of what John and I want to do today is look at what our story of moving forward over the last really year and a half since the Resilience film was released, uh, where we've come as a community and just how that conversation is going. So we, as, as Jason suggested, we have an interactive session plan. We planned really to stretch the limits of Zoom. Um, and that should bring us to about 1230, I think, which maybe isn't too, too far off lunch. Uh, it, we may, may make some variations as we go along. I love this, and I want to bring it forward from Sonia's talk, that nothing is more powerful than how we imagine things. And I think with climate change and now with COVID as part of climate change, we have an enormous opportunity to imagine how we go forward. And we do that through community dialogue. And that um, is very much the work of the last year and a half. I just want to send warm wishes to Liz Zetlin, who certainly would have loved to have joined us today, but was unable to. And John, let me ask you a question. As someone I've got to know over the last year and a half, um, I'm working on climate change. Really, how does a scientist become part of a film? And what have you learned about community engagement in your endeavors with us all? Well, Marilyn, um, the making of the film has been a huge part of my journey in talking to people about climate change here in Bruce Gray and the One Sound. Several years ago, I started giving talks on climate change to all sorts of groups in our area. And every, every time I gave a talk, I'd get more requests. And the demand just kept growing and it grew beyond my ability to actually give them all. Also, I was realizing as a, as a biophysical scientist, like, like myself, um, we were becoming more aware that maybe we weren't the best ones to tell this story because it is actually mostly a story about people and their, and their values, as Sonia was telling us. By the time of autumn of 2016, I had this idea of making a documentary film as a way of extending my reach, so to speak. And I knew Liz, I knew she was a great communicator and filmmaker, so I asked her, she immediately said yes, and the rest is history as far as the film goes. Um, what have I learned um, since the film? Well. I'm learning and seeing a lot of things and the list is growing, but let me just give you a few of the things that I've, I've been learning. I, first of all, I am meeting some great people who are passionate about where we live and for the future of our children and grandchildren. This I have found has been very inspirational. Based on social science research, I have learned that people here in Gray, Bruce, Owen Sound, they lag Ontarians in their understanding of climate change and willingness to do anything about it. So, I've learned it's more of an uphill struggle for us here than in other communities. I'm learning you must be very patient when working with our local elected officials. It all takes time. Some councillors want to address um, the issue of climate change and some do not. Some, many will watch our movie, but some will actually not even watch our movie. 
I've learned that there are some people who want to focus on making personal changes to their own lives and there are other people who want to engage and work with decision makers to build uh, better, more resilient communities. Um, but I'm also learning that recently there's been a surge of interest and a willingness to participate. And this has really occurred in the last couple of years as people are becoming more aware of climate change and both the challenges and opportunities this is presenting. So how, how is that for starters and what I'm learning? <laughs> Great. Thank you, John. So can I ask you a couple? Uh, I'll of tell you that. Sure. Ask me just one. So we keep keep trying along well, here. The one that really comes to mind is what got you engaged in our film project and what keeps you being engaged? So Liz probably tells this story better than, than I do. She tends to tell it fairly frequently. Liz uh, put an ad out on Facebook. I didn't know Liz. I didn't know John. Um, looking for someone who was ambivalent about climate change. And believe it or not, that was me. And I, I uh, felt myself overwhelmed with the whole thing. I couldn't read about climate change. I couldn't think about it. I couldn't think about my grandchildren um, or the woods around me in, when I thought about climate change. So I volunteered and I met Liz. She came out and it's probably a really good thing her camera failed uh, the first time around because I think I wept through most of that. And uh, that sort of led to an understanding that for me, like for many people, for my mental health, it's better to be engaged in what I struggle with in my community than it is to be standing on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't anticipate I would be in the film. Um, I thought I was going to be part of a survey. Uh, but I found the result of sitting with 400 other people at the premiere of the film made me want to do more. I'm a facilitator, so I offered to facilitate. And I'll tell you a little bit about that journey as, as we move on today. Uh, but the takeaway from my experience is it's better for my mental health to be involved in working in our community than it is to be sitting alone at home feeling ambivalent. I think that's well uh, documented in mental health literature as well about engagement. So what we're going to do this morning, um, you've been listening for a really, really long time. And our hope is through the wonders of Zoom um, to allow you to talk to each other a little bit, to do a bit of a polling uh, around um, what we're actually doing in our community and still finish up in time for you to have lunch. So I want to first introduce uh, my colleague, Liz Reichardt. Liz, do you want to say something so your picture comes up on the screen? Just unmuting. Hi, everyone. I'm Liz. Uh, okay. Liz and I have worked together over many years on um, a variety of projects. Liz now lives up here, which is fabulous for me. She's a wonderful facilitator, but she's also way better on the extremes of Zoom than, than I am. So I'm very grateful she's going to be running the, the back end. So here's the sort of shape of this. I had uh, planned that we take you through a really quick walk through what's happened with the film and what our community dialogue looks like. I would offer you a framework that's come out of a local group. We call, remote, we call ourselves a Carbon Conversations Group. We're really the brain trust behind this, this session. Uh, put you into groups for 10 minutes and then bring you back out to do a, a quick poll so we get a, an idea of where we're actually working in our community and where perhaps we are not. So question to you in the chat, how hungry are you? Are you on for the 10 minutes in the chat with each other or do you want me to sh foreshorten that? So just to answer that question first in the poll if you'd like or in the, the chat. And Liz, I'll get you to bring up the PowerPoint, which is mercifully very brief. Here we go. I'm going to start the screen share. And at the end, I'll ask you to tell us what the, the poll trend is on the chat. Will do. All right, give me a thumbs up or something when you can see the screen. Got it? Okay. So 
Believe it or not, it was a year and a half ago that that film was released. 400 people gathered in the Roxy. Uh, and since then, we've done 25 community screenings, uh, most of which I've had the privilege to facilitate. As we moved away from a, a sort of Q&A framework that we had uh, people did in the, in the um, initial premiere, more to a community conversation, trying to talk to each other about how we think about this, what we do about it, and what we need to create in our communities to respond to climate change. And Liz tells me there have been a thousand, more than a thousand views on YouTube. So if you haven't seen the, the film, Liz Reichart has put that link in the chat for you. Um, but Liz Zetlin is telling us more than a thousand different views and we're still doing these facilitated conversations in, in our community. Next slide, Liz, please. So what happened is people started to talk to each other rather in spades. Um, we used a simple framework where we asked people to just stop and think for a minute and then choose someone in the room and begin to talk about what they felt we would we should be doing. And my experience of that as a facilitator was really quite, quite wonderful. You know, you, you get to watch people have the same conversation over and over and over again. And that teaches you things about how the conversation is shaped in our community. And so what we saw was a lot of grief, not just mine, sorrow, stuckness, despair, concern for the future, a lot of uncertainty, about how we navigate through the very many very important things that various people are telling us that we need to do. And a rather bit of relief when people were able to speak their thoughts out loud to one another and receive, I guess, some validation, some sharing in that, but also that seems to release a way of thinking about what the next steps is. So this feeling that Sonia talks about of overwhelm, of um, withdrawing, uh, is something that we all need to practice overcoming. It's a practice, I guess. Our way forward was to try and do that by creating conversations between people and then seeing what they came up with and what we came up with collectively. So next slide, Liz. So one of the things that's happened over the last year and a half is seven different groups, uh, partly because of the film, partly because of other things that were going on in communities, have formed what we call now municipally focused climate action teams or climate action groups. They all have slightly different names. So quite independently of one another, people have formed in some ways that connect with their municipality. Sometimes they're part of a, former, a formal climate team committee that the municipalities just created. Georgian Bluffs has just, congratulations, created one of these. Sometimes the municipality wouldn't go for that. And they've remained as a community-based group, sort of lobbying, pushing, creating conversations. Um, oh, and sound would be an example of, of where that has, has happened more. But these municipal groups are really interesting. They're local, uh, in as much as we have neighborhoods in Grey Bruce, they are a neighbor, they are a neighborhood, um, have that neighborhood capacity. And just recently, they've started to join up. So um, a number of them, in fact, all of them participated in a group with Grey County uh, to have some input into the climate action uh, planning that Grey County's doing at the moment. So these guys are new players on our landscape, um, environmental landscape, and they're really generalists. They're looking at community and they incorporate members of our more traditional groups that are looking at trees or water or energy or carbon or soil, that kind of thing. Next slide. So very quickly, this is a framework that we found really useful in thinking about this. It's not our framework, but really with climate change, it's thinking about what's the problem we're actually trying to solve here. What kind of problem is it? A simple problem, oops, switch Liz, is baking a cake. I have a recipe, you have a recipe, might be not quite as fabulous as this, but it's probably gonna be basically black forest cake, right? Not a vanilla cake, we follow the same recipe. Next, sending a rocket to the moon is a collection of recipes. 
It's a bunch of cook, cooks working from different recipes, rocket science, it's a very complicated thing. But if they all follow their recipe, that rocket takes off. It launches. Next, raising a child is a complex problem. And as a mom and a grandma, I found this kind of a helpful way to think about where these conversations were going and how as a facilitator we, sh we shape them. Raising one child gives you no guarantee about how the next one's gonna turn out. We know this, we all know this. We can't separate the parts of the work from the whole. So what you do at home and what happens at school and what happens at the park are all connected. We are always uncertain about the outcome. At some point they graduate, they become adults, they have children of their own, but there's still an uncertainty. And fundamentally, fundamentally this is all based in relationship. Personal relationship, community relationship, and political relationships. And that is the nature of climate change. It's a diverse and many-parted problem that we're solving in, in relationship with one another, with our politicians, and with the land that we love. And so, next slide, Liz. This little brain trust, um, whose names you'll see in the final slide we've had a, a chance to work with, have really been thinking about how do we create engagement that maybe it matters less what we each do or that we each do the right thing, then that we do something, that we begin the story uh, as I did with that Facebook post and ended up facilitating workshops like this, that we begin the story somewhere and we learn our way forward. For those of you who've heard Sonia's speech before, she talks about a cathedral window, you know, and how for each a different pane of glass of the climate action team and Owen Sound hosted her. It's a beautiful analogy for how there are many parts to a climate solution. Our, our, our cathedrals really are our forests. That's where, where this little thinking group landed. They are those beautiful places that we long to preserve, that we gain, regain our health in. But really, it, there are many points of connection in a forest. There's a huge diversity. And it's that diversity of activity that generates health and generates options for activities. And so this final slide in our uh, sort of more formal part of this is this wheel that we've come up with to hold this idea. So whether you buy an electric car or whether you lobby uh, your politicians or whether you stand on the streets of City Hall with the young people, we each have a different story in to how this works. And so we can begin in whatever location we find ourselves in. We can tune in and in each of those locations we've discovered actually has a plethora of stories. So we're starting to gather the stories um, for how people begin and how people learn their way forward in climate change. If you tune in to nature and spirit, and COVID's been a wonderful opportunity for many of us to uh, figure out just how important that is, it can quickly lead you around the wheel to participating in a political process. As we've seen with the Stony Orchard Park, a campaign in Owen Sound. We've seen it with a similar campaign in Craigleith. I just lost the name of that park, Heritage Park in Craigleith, where people begin to join in in political action and, and do things perhaps they wouldn't have thought of before with petitions and, and so on, starting forward. Learning, we all are on a learning curve. There are many experts and many, many more amateurs at, at this. And so a young woman I know, a young mom um, that I met through my early days in working with Liz on the film, she came to climate change first because her kids were involved in, in uh, school projects. And they started to think about what they could do and they were struggling with their meat eating and the impact of meat on climate change, which is a thing that many of us I know think about and perhaps have a little more difficulty um, these kids ended up marching on the street with Sonia Ostertag one day. It was great fun to see, even though the initial starting place was, oh my God, don't get run over. And this woman has become a fabulous vegan cook. So if you need help in our community getting past a tofu dog, Amy's the person to go to. 
Bob, who's many of us know as a maple syrup guy, Bob is a longtime farmer, grows his own vegetables. Bob's now taking advice from his son who used to work in the oil patch. Do you put your retirement funds where you want the future, where you want to imagine the future to be? And that's not in oil. And if you can't find your, your guide to help you do that, you find another, another uh, investment person to help you do that. Wireton, um, sorry, Liz, we're supposed to be still on the wheel. Just the very one, very last one. Um, agencies in our community, this is a shout out for you. Have a look at the story of the Wyarton uh, Salvation Army and what they've done with their food bank. There are just a million ways for agencies who have people in cars, have buildings, have um, landscapes, uh, have that dual responsibility for working with people who are perhaps not faring so well and meeting carbon obligations. Uh, love to be chatting with you about how to use this wheel as a planning framework. So Liz, what did we get? Are people thinking maybe they'd like to meet in groups and think about where you begin in this wheel, tell stories to each other? Yeah, I think people want to carry on if we can. Um, some people need to drop off, which is fine. Um, we do have breakout rooms ready to go uh, for smaller groups and to go for seven minutes. So shall we send okay. breakout room? Yeah, let's let me just give you the question for your breakout room. Let me find it in my massive paper. So first of all, you'll see a pop up window. You just click yes. Liz will give you a, a one minute warning when you need to wrap up your conversation. What I'm going to suggest is while you're getting into your breakout room, just take that pause moment and think about your answer to the question. And here's the question. Tell your group a story of something you're doing and, or you're considering doing and where that fits on the wheel. Liz is going to post the elements of the wheel for you. And then when you come back, we're going to do a quick poll to see just where we sit. Okay, Liz. Okay. So, so I'm just going to uh, post those elements now. Um, and you will be able to see the chat when you move to the groups. Uh, and so off we go. You'll get a one minute warning um, countdown uh, to let you know that the group is going to end. And you should be in groups of three to four people. You can always come back to the main room if there's some problem in your group and I can reassign you. So don't hesitate to do that. So here we go. Hi, Ann. Hello. Is it just the two of us? So far, I guess. Okay. So we're supposed to talk about which of those things, which of those, is that the idea? I think that was the direction to talk about which portions of that wheel um, resonate with you, I think. I was kind of multitasking, to be honest, so I might have missed some of the directions. Uh, I, I will confess to the same thing. Um, so I think for me, and probably for you, you, you know, there's your professional thing that you do, and so you're kind of in it all the time and um, consumed by the big picture, and I feel that way about the hub because there's just a lot of things that people want to cover and a lot of things that people... Um, want us to write about and report on. So there's that big thing. And then there's my little odd obsession with litter picking up, mm -hmm. which is kind of my, um, um, you know, I listen to podcasts and I walk and I get fresh air and I get a little bit of, not exactly aerobic, but a little bit of exercise and steps in the day. And I'm able to do something really practical. So for me, it, it's just for mental health purposes, 
as well as physical health, it's um, important for me to be able to do something really tangible. I know it's like nothing. It's like the guy throwing the starfish back in the sea, that story. You know, I know yes. it's minute, but it helps me um, step back from the big thing that is there all the time. Yeah, I think that resonates with me too. Obviously, professionally, um, the political, there was one around political engagement, I think, or something to that effect. So certainly through the role as a health unit, we're doing lots of outreach on this topic. Even this conference, I guess, would kind of fall into that realm. Um, so doing a lot of that professionally, I think personally, um, trying to do lots of things as well. I think the big thing for us as a family is just trying to reduce our plastic waste. Um, so just trying to reuse plastic bags, little simple things like that. Um, obviously recycling and composting and things like that as well. So yeah, I would agree that it happens at two levels, personally and professionally. Hi, Mary. Mary, if you can hear us, you're on mute. You'll have to just click on the little microphone button to unmute yourself. Maybe she's just a watcher. That's Maybe okay. <laughs> she, there were a few people I'm sure. Oh, there we've got the unmute. Yeah, we've got you. I have, uh, I have a, someone else here with me. Yes. To introduce Araby here. Araby Lockhart. Hello, Araby. Hi. And we've spoken on the phone both yeah. to both you, yeah. yourself, Araby and Mary. So I'm glad you were able to figure this all out and join us today. Yeah. We had a little help. <laughs> help is help is good. So we were yeah. just we were just discussing kind of the things that we were doing on that wheel that they um yes. that Marilyn had highlighted earlier. Is there anything, Araby, that you're doing personally that reflects Well, I think that I will start to talk, I mean to advertise the importance of climate change. Because people just say, Oh yes, climate change. Oh yeah. Uh huh, and let, and let it go. I think we have to, you know, pinpoint what we're going to do and how we're going to do it. And I think it was very, very clear where we start with the sump pump. I think we've lost them. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think I've had enough. Yeah, I did like the the clarity in, in Blair's message, that one simple thing that we can all do in terms of the flooding aspects is yes. very difficult. Yeah. Well, actually, uh, we've been doing a whole lot of the things that, that we saw this morning on the program. So um, for me, I, it's, it reinforces how important it is. I think of it as just me who are talks all the time, probably people are thinking, oh, well, oh, well. But this morning's program has made me realize that it is important and to keep on doing what I'm doing. Absolutely. Yeah. We, right. uh, I invited a 16-year-old co-op student who is uh, helping out with the hub to be at this conference today. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important for he or her to hear that her needs, her future. I, I told her about this t-shirt that says, how old will you be in 2050? That we, <laughs> we won't be around either of us. Exactly. And I think it's important for her to know that people our yeah. age who are making decisions and doing work and have some power in this world are thinking about her and how old yes. she will be in 2050 and what her world will look like. So I'm really happy to hear people talk about the things that they do and that they do have this, the future in mind. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important that the guy who talked to the Indian guy, the, the, the native. native person saying, stand up for who you are. I think that's very important. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yes, and I work with an Indigenous group with the, with the COVID. We're not meeting like we used to, 
but uh, we've done work and workshops and uh, uh, doing, promoting a lot of the things. And I, the one who said how important ceremony is, I am not Indigenous, but I tell you, when I'm involved in their ceremonies, they make a great big difference. I think it's important, too, to understand that um, everybody will be impacted differently by all of mm -hmm. this. And some people, yes. especially women, especially women of color, mm -hmm. especially Indigenous and Northern communities will be impacted far more. So our need to stand together, even when it doesn't impact us as much, is really important. Right, right. We agree. So anyways, when is it, when's the break over? Um, we're going to go back and it sounds like we'll be pulled back in nine seconds to the main room. Um, mm -hmm. And then I know there's a little further presentation and then we do our formal lunch break. Nice chatting with everyone. And we are part of the Collingwood Climate Action Group. Mm -hmm. All right, we're coming back quick. Yeah, everyone's coming back. It's great to see everyone's faces. It's, uh, I know a lot of people have had their uh, video off for listening mode, so it's great to see people. Yeah. Here. Hands up if that's the first time you've been in a Zoom breakout. Okay, that's fun. So lesson learned, some people were there and some people were not. So the automatic assignment should have checked in with uh, everyone who was actually live with us. So apologies for those who ended up in empty rooms, not our intention. So uh, <laughs> lesson learned and we'll take note for next time. So we actually hoisted the climate action teams online, um, one by one by each. Some of them are still getting there in uh, the spring of the year when we we're all in lockdown and COVID. And uh, it had some really interesting ramifications, you know, because it meant we didn't have to get in the car and drive to join each other's meetings anymore. Um, and some of the meetings were sort of long and drawn out. And some of them we, we've been learning how to do different, different things in. So it, it's a wonderful tool for engagement, but there's a kind of steady learning curve. So what, now what I'd like you to do in the last few minutes we have before, um, I guess 10 minutes or so before lunch, is just put in the chat what your story was about. No, we don't need the whole big story that you've, you've talked about, but let's say Bruce and Ruth talked about um, in, in my group, having a gas stove and some of the changes they've made. Karen talked about plastics and her concern with plastics. So just put that, those highlight headliners in and link it for us, if you would, to one of those sections in the wheel. And at the same time, as you are doing that, Liz is going to mount a poll. So this is question two for you, for us. I'm fascinated to know what our answer will be, or answers. The poll allows us to say, to, to, ask, to ask you this question. Just personally, which are the one or two of those seven areas that you feel most engaged with? And when we come back, we'll be able to have a little data set there of where we're functioning most and where we're not functioning so much in terms of engagement in our community. So are you on for that? Second adventure, I promise you will not disappear down any cyber holes. Liz, are you good to go with the poll? Poll's live. People are completing it. Okay, you might good. not see it because you're a co-host. That's right. I can't see uh, it. So, uh, yeah, we've got lots of people responding. And maybe um, we can just read a few of what, people's are, are saying. what people are saying. Arlene, I see, is planning to get an e-vehicle. Um, Karen is teaching her kids to live in more environmentally sustainable ways. John, you might want to join us in the reading because I know you've heard many of these stories before. I see ecological farming is something that people are talking about here. Um, yeah, that's a big stop topic. printing committee meeting minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That'll save mounds of paper. Someone's joined a municipal plant, a municipal action group. Um, Planting trees to replace the loss of the ash trees in the community to the... Yeah. Or, 
And Mel's joined P-R-W-I-N. Mel, you might say in the chat what that actually is. Uh, Helen Doyle is a volunteer with uh, Public Health Association promoting health focused climate action plan phase two launches. I lost it October 29th, I think. Rob Potters, a council rep. While we're screening that, just to keep things moving, uh, we have 50 of 76 who have voted. So that's about 65% of people have completed the poll. Um, just want to give people another minute or two if you haven't had a chance to complete the poll and then I'll end it. Um, and I can uh, give people some uh, idea of, of the things that you have shared. Right now, the largest percentage of responses is choosing to live green in my own way. 42% right. of people are responding with that. But otherwise, it's spread quite a lot around the will. Going public with, with a social action is, I guess, the lowest at 18%. Next highest is organizing and advocating for local change. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting to see how uh, people are where they're at in the stages of things and, and seeing that, you know, thinking about that complexity of that wheel, uh, just because you're in one or the other predominantly doesn't mean you're also attending to some of the other actions at the same time. Okay, we'll save this this chat. It's really fascinating to see how many various ways people are are engaged in their own way. I, I know John's point was that perhaps we may feel a little behind the curve, but I wonder sometimes when I'm doing these things, whether we just don't know enough about what each other is doing collectively, that that may in fact be it. And, and many of us have lived um, in this community for a long, long time. Those of us self-avowed old hippies from the 60s and 70s who went back to the land. And I recognize some of you out there. Liz, can you show us the poll at this point? Yeah, I'm going to end the poll. Okay, thanks very much for participating in that experiment. Let's see what we've got. You should be able to see it now. People see it? No, I cannot, sadly. Okay. And have to figure out how to take it. Living and learning. So why don't you take us through what it tells us, Liz? See how sure. I can't see it. Uh, so 25% of people are turning to nature and our local environment. 29% uh, learning about climate change and our impact on the environment. 42% uh, choosing to live green in my own way. 29% talking with friends, family, and community. 38% um, organizing and advocating for local change, 31% participating in political process and action, and 18% going public with the social action. Marilyn, I'm going to take a little picture of this for you. So you That'd be great. I see <laughs> all the people too. Okay. That's great. Thanks. So we have that for posterity. Isn't that interesting? Now we would consider ourselves to be an engaged group, right? You don't come to a climate action. Um, conference run by public health unless you are already somewhat engaged. Um, but I know it, that as we think as climate action teams around the community about what our work might be coming up, having numbers like this from time to time is really useful. And you in fact can do the same kind of process and polling using the wheel in your local community group. Do it in your church groups, do it in your municipal council, and uh, as we get to know where the points of um, movement are for us as, an, as a, whole, a whole community. Okay. It's lovely to see the, the range of comments in the chat. And I think this, what we'll do is we'll copy that chat, um, nup it into a Word document, and maybe we can make a little report back for public health to mount on their website around what this particular group is doing. And Liz, you, you could take us to the last slide. I'm so aware I'm standing between you and lunch. Okay, I just got to go back to uh, yeah. screen share. 
share and we'll go to the next slide. And just as Liz is doing that, if you have strong opinions from having had this little chat, put in the chat what you think we should be doing next. If you have a focus on what you think we should be doing, please just take the next two minutes or so to add that. Because this forest, you know how you wander in the forest in the, this early spring, you can see it fairly clearly because not much is growing. This is what I learned in my COVID wanders. But once all the underbrush comes, you can't, you have to really look, you have to really learn to look at what the activities are in our forest, what's beginning, what's creeping in, what's changing. That's the kind of stuff I think we want to keep our eyes on when we're working in a complex kind of framework. Nice comment from Thorsten. It appears we still believe our choice of job is independent from climate change work. Um, for De from Danuta, connecting up those groups so we're amplifying the conversation in some kind of a network. Um, holding our politicians to the promises they've made to help us protect our environment. Really, that's such an interesting one for just this new conversation with municipalities um, and these climate action teams. What do people need from their municipalities in order to take to play their part to do what we need to do as individuals? So I'm going to see is I see Leah's got some things planned in her session this afternoon about some concrete next steps. So that's terrific to see. Great. So I just want to draw your attention, just keep writing um, until Jason um, comes in and our time is up, which should probably be another three or four minutes, Jason. Just take a look at the, the last slide. Watch the film Resilience if you haven't. We're still available to do these facilitated talks for community groups. Um, I think John has kindly agreed to step in for Liz, at least for a while. Uh, find your spot on the wheel, wherever that might be, and begin the journey. If you know where that spot is, see where that journey takes you to another spot um, and how that might develop for you. Uh, with the kind permission of all of those stars on the map, the climate action groups, here's contact information for how to find them. This will also be up on Jason's website. And I know all of those folks are now keyed and ready. If you have... Um, one, you see one in your community you'd like to join. If you don't see one, maybe we could be starting one. Maybe you'd like to show the film, convene a conversation and start one of these. It's a good thing for municipalities to be doing as well. And a great thing for our agency communities to be engaged in. And finally, I just wanna credit the Brain Trust behind all of this, the Carbon Conversation Group, which has been meeting dedicatedly all through uh, COVID and through the summer. Odette Bartnicki, just give a wave. Bob Gray, if you're with us, you lost a monster tag. Ann Snyder, whose original uh, idea was how we, we think of this as a forest, and myself. So thanks very much for tuning in. And Jason, I'm back over to you. Thank and you very you. much, Marilyn. And I, I'm seeing that Lee has put um, in the chat as well of the link uh, to some of these groups. So if you don't have time to jot them down, that there was a link included in the chat. And Lee may be speaking more to that this afternoon as well during his session. So um, thank you again, Marilyn. Thank you, Liz. And thank you, John. Wonderful session. I love the use of technology, the breakouts, the polls, um, everything uh, actually went very smoothly. So well done.